Happy Wednesday, sweet friends. I'm Kelly Thorne Gore, and I am so excited to be going through Draw the Circle by Mark Batterson with you. We're doing a 40 day prayer challenge, and God is showing up in the most incredible ways. And I believe He is growing our faith in big ways, mine for sure. And today is day 23, and it's not now. Have you ever had something you were praying about and God didn't answer it the way you thought he would, or he didn't answer it in the timing that you thought it would happen? I know I've had many things that I have prayed about and I thought the perfect timing would be such and such date, but God in his infinite wisdom, knew that it would be different. And I think it's learning to trust God in the process of that. And I believe that today's devotional is such a powerful reminder of that. So let's dig into some of it. So if you're following along with me in the book, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to start at page 129 at the very beginning. Yeah, Lisa, I'm with you. I have certainly had those times where God just didn't show up the way I thought he was going to show up. Hey, Jana, so glad you're loving this because I am as well. All right, so it opens with when God says no to a prayer, it doesn't always mean no. Sometimes it means not yet. It's the right request, but the wrong time. And I think this is where we have to learn to trust God that he knows all the details. Like he knows how our lives intertwine with other people's lives. Like he sees the whole big picture and he knows when it's the right time. And I think sometimes we try to force things to happen in our own ability. I know I have been guilty of that. When in reality, God wants us to trust him. He wants us to seek him. I love how Mark Batterson talks about we have to pray like it depends on God. So that comes first, the praying, the seeking God, the asking him, okay, God, what is the best use of my time and energy today? How do you want me to make a difference today? What do you want me to do toward that goal today? What do you want me to do toward that dream today? And then we have to work like it depends on us. So the praying comes first and then we work and we work based on what God's shown us in prayer. And so we're not forcing things to happen in our own ability. And I love this story that Mark Batterson shares in the devotional today. He talks about how he and his wife were looking for a new home and they found a home that looked perfect and God gave them a very specific number that they were going to offer. And they offered it and he said, we kind of used it as a prayer fleece. Well, the owner turned it down and they probably could have forced that sale to happen. They could have gone back and negotiated higher, but they were confident in the number that they gave. And so even though they were really disappointed because this was their dream home, he said they had already like redesigned it in their minds. They were excited about it. They turned it down. Well, they later find out the house goes up for sale again. The owner had never sold it. And so they go back and they do the same exact offer. And this time the owner accepts it. Okay, but I don't want you to miss a really important part of this story. So listen to this. He says, now here's the icing on the cake. By waiting a year to buy the house, our house actually went up in value by 10% because the real estate, real estate market in DC had rebounded. So we got our dream home for the same amount of money that we would have a year earlier. It was definitely, let's see, um, and sold our old house for a lot more money than we would have had a year earlier. It was definitely worth the wait. And tithing on the sale of our house was one of the easiest checks we've ever written because God's hand of blessing was so evident. I love that. And I love the reminder that God's timing really is perfect. 
Had they forced it, they wouldn't have made that extra money on their home and they wouldn't have had more money to give as a result of that. And so I think this is a reminder to each of us as we're pursuing things that we really want and even desires that God has put in our heart, we can't make it happen because that's not God's best for us. He knows what's best. And when we trust him with that, when we trust that he's working out the details and that his timing is perfect, then we have the assurance of knowing it's going to happen. We don't know how, we don't know when, but it's going to happen. And it's we've got to keep praying and we got to keep doing our part, the things that he shows us to do. I love a couple of little tidbits when he was talking about this story. He says, you know, sometimes when we think it's a no, it's a not yet. It's a not yet. And we can still keep trusting God and pursuing God. He says, sometimes we have to be willing to give something up to God in order to get it back from him. And I love this because God, he says, God wants to test us to make sure that the gift isn't more important than the gift giver. This is important to remember that our dream isn't more important than the one who gave us the dream. That our purpose isn't more important than the one who gave us the purpose. God wants us to rely on him and to see him as the giver of the gift. And he says he'll test us to make sure that that thing, that dream, that goal, that vision is not an idol in our life. If it is the dream, the gift, the desire might need to die so that it can be resurrected. But God often takes things away to give them back so that we know they are gifts to be stewarded for his glory. And I definitely know this with my health journey. So if you know part of my story, when I was 18, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma and told that I probably had about six months to live. And it was a defining point in my life for sure. When I look back at defining moments, that was one a big moment in my life because it's the first time I remember telling God that however many days I have left, I want them to be used for you. I remember laying in my bed that night and just praying and asking God, like, God, why do I have to carry this burden? Like, why me? And it was this dedication almost. Like, I was a child of God. Like, I had walked with God for several years. But it was this moment of saying, okay, God, like, I want what you want. And so if I have 60 days or 60 years, I'm going to use every day to honor you. And I believe that was a pivotal moment in my walk with God because since then I've really like put a high price on health for sure, but also just learning to live in dependence on God that we're not promised tomorrow. And so I want to make today count. And I know you want to make today count as well. Okay. He says, you name it. I don't have to wait for it, but waiting is part of praying. So does anybody else struggle with waiting? Yeah, I don't really like to wait either. But he says, waiting is part of praying. And praying is part of waiting. Prayer will sanctify our waiting. So we wait with holy expectancy. I love that. And I would encourage you to write it on a post-it note. That you are waiting with holy expectancy. You might write it on your prayer circle. That you are praying and you are believing with holy expectancy. That God's going to show up and he's going to do it in his perfect timing. And he's going to do it in his way that he knows is best. He knows it. He says, waiting doesn't delay God's plans and purpose. It always expedites them. So we think waiting is delaying, but in reality, waiting is God just getting it ready. He's getting us ready. He's getting the situation ready, and it is an expediting 
of it. Waiting is the fast track to whatever it is that God wants to do in our lives. Let me read that again because you need to like soak it in. Waiting expedites it. Waiting is the fast track to whatever it is that God wants to do in our lives. And we'll discover that on God's timeline, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. And the thing I know is that sometimes we think it has to go in this certain order, but in a day, God can change it. In a day, God can give you an idea. In a day, God can put someone on your path. In a day, it can change. And this is powerful, powerful. We think we have too much to do. So he talks about um, that when we're busy, prayer is often one of the first things to go off our list. And oftentimes we're busy. I know this season of COVID maybe has had a slow down a little bit or we've been home more. Um, maybe you haven't had a commute. Um, and so maybe it's looked a little bit different. But for the most part, a lot of us are busy. And when we get busy, we stop spending time with God. We stop praying as much. We stop sitting in his presence. And that's the time we need to pray more. So let's dig into these quotes. He said, we think we have too much to do to pray, but the exact opposite is true. We have too much to do not to pray. And he shares this quote from Martin Luther that says, I have so much to do that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. The more you have to do, the more we have to pray. And this is so important that we're spending that time with God, especially when we're busy. Because we're busy doing things often for God, whether that's with our family or our career or our purpose. And if we spend more time doing the things than we do sitting in his presence, we're going to miss it. And that's when those things, maybe it's our marriage, maybe it's our kids, maybe it's this purpose or this dream that God has given us. When that thing becomes an idol, is when it becomes a challenge. It's when we're trying to do it in our own ability. We're trying to grind it out and make it happen and hustle our way to seeing it to completion versus resting in God's presence versus seeking God. So my friend Shay Bynes has an incredible book. I wasn't planning on sharing it, so I don't have it in front of me, but I'll post the link to it. If you have not read it, I highly recommend it. Um, it's called Grace Over Grind, and it's learning to work and operate from God's rhythm versus us grinding and hustling to make it happen. So it's written specifically for business, but I feel like it's applicable whether you're in business or not. It's a fantastic resource. Okay, I'm going to close with this last little quote. It says, after we pray like it depends on God, we need to work like it depends on us. But if we don't pray first, our work won't work. Isn't that powerful? We can't do something for God until we let God do something for us. He wants to fill us with his Holy Spirit, but we have to empty ourselves first. From the depths of our heart to the depths of our minds, the Holy Spirit wants to fill every crevice that already exists and create new capacities within us. And when the Holy Spirit comes on us, we will think new thoughts and have new feelings. It's part of the package deal. This is so important that we are sitting with God and that we're allowing him to speak into us, that we're allowing the Holy Spirit to fill every crevice of our body, of our mind, of our spirit, of our heart, so that we are doing what God's called us to do. And when we do that, we have this holy expectation that it might not be right now. It might not be yet, but it's going to happen in God's perfect timing. 
All right. I hope you have an amazing day. Yeah. Paulette said she's listening to Shay's book on Audible. I have all the versions of Shay's book. Audible. Um, I have a rhythm that every time on a, I'm on an airplane, I listen to it. I love it. I have the physical copy that is all marked up. I have the Kindle version so I can send quotes. It is one of my all-time favorite books, and that's the Grace Over Grind I talked to you about. All right. I hope you have an awesome day. I'll see you tomorrow.